Where were you when 9-11 happened? In the forest, camping. No radio, no phone. I came back to civilization five days later. Everyone had processed what happened as much as you would expect. I had not even heard about it, so I was out of sync with the world. Strange times. Man, you must have found a portal out there and accidentally traveled to a bad timeline. There's a really good podcast called 912, which is all about how we as a society reacted to 911. And one of the stories they tell is about people who were on a boat in the middle of the ocean filming some reality show. It sounds like your experience was very similar to those people. If I'm not mistaken, I think the MTV show The Real World was being filmed during 9-11 as well. I remember them giving them TVs to watch because the show usually didn't allow TVs and stuff in the house. Getting ready to pick up relatives at the airport in preparation for our wedding. How was the airport scene? Oh, their planes were grounded mid-flight. The wedding was cancelled. I was pretty young during 9-11, so I wasn't a traveler at that point, but I did have some flights cancelled at the start of C-19, and I remember it being a weird feeling. I can only imagine how it felt during 9-11. Under anesthesia at the Boston Children's Hospital, I woke up being moved into an elevator on a gurney. They had finished my surgery, but weren't bringing me to the recovery ward. Boston's Children's Hospital is a very tall building, and Boston had advised all buildings to evacuate all the floors above the 10th floor so I was moved down to a lobby after my surgery. That's gotta be wild, going under in one reality and waking up in another. That's pretty much like anytime something happens during the night. That last statement is super true. My most recent experience with that was waking up in America and hearing about the earthquakes in Turkey. Not something anyone should have to wake up to. I was sleeping during the first plane, getting ready for work when the second hit. Went to work for three hours with no customers. Called the boss, he said close, and went home. Watched CNN and tried to convince my mom that I wasn't about to get drafted. Same, but in high school. Sleeping for the first plane, when waking up to my parents being like, what is going on? Saw the second plane hit. Went to school anyways. We spent all day in every class just watching the news. Sitting on our desks, on the floor, pacing around, just crawling in our own skins. Teachers and students alike. They let us ask questions and express our feelings to the best of everyone's abilities. Lunch period was surreal. There was silence. Not a single plane in the sky. Got in the car, turned on music, and then turned it off immediately. It felt disrespectful. Whatever fast food we got that day was just eaten in silence. So gut-wrenching. Remember it like it was yesterday. Similar, my brother was a truck driver and happened to be in New York State at the time. He called my dad at home. I watched the second plane hit live. I did go to school afterwards, but it was an odd day. I'm in Canada on the border with New York State, so we were glued to CNN. I vaguely remember seeing F-18s flying. I remember sitting in the library watching the news just talking about the events. My brother was stranded in the States for a week or so because the borders were closed. It was long enough over here in Australia. I had an American friend on the internet mention the first plane hit, promoting me to go and turn on the late night news. A few minutes after I started watching, the second plane hit live on TV. Before that, everyone still thought it must have been an accident. But when the second plane hit, we all knew what it meant. This was me at my school. The teachers turned on the news for about a minute before the second plane hit, so my homeroom class saw it happen. After that, the principal got on the PA and said to turn off all the TVs and go about the day as naturally as possible. I was mad when they did that. One of the biggest breaking news events in our lifetime and they weren't letting us watch it because they were worried that we were scared? I was already scared and keeping me in the dark made it worse. This must have been a tough situation for adults. I mean, I totally understand wanting to protect children from that madness. It's easily a traumatic experience. On the R train that just passed underneath the towers in Cortland Street, the conductor of the R train after mine was instructed to go straight through and not stop. They disobeyed that order and stopped took on as many people as possible and got out of there. That conductor likely saved a lot of lives. There's almost no mention of that anywhere in the news. Oh my God, that's crazy. Incredibly heroic on their part. I was in Manhattan, watched the towers fall, heard the crowds that had gathered all down Fifth Avenue gasp and scream in unison as the first tower crumbled. Gathered in a packed bar with freaked out coworkers as we first saw the photo of Osama bin Laden on TV. Walked home to Queens with thousands of other shocked New Yorkers in eerie silence, with the occasional ghostly figure of a downtown worker covered in white dust. My ex-wife was in the second tower, got out when the first one was hit. Her brother was in the first tower. Luckily, he also got out. She was knocked down by the concussion of the tower falling. Some stranger picked her up by her elbows. It was her brother. She also had a few other heartwarming tidbits. As she walked home to Brooklyn, she had been breaking in new heels and some dude in a corner store gave her a pair of flip-flops. 
they broke three blocks later, giving her her first post 9-11 laugh. She still has them today in her hope chest. She also said that people were turning radios to the streets so she could get a running commentary about potential other attacks, and others were handing out bottles of water to newly minted pedestrian commuters. New Yorkers, man, complete jerks if you're in their way during rush hour. But if you yell help, the whole freaking city comes running. My kind of people. Came home from school, I was in the UK, age 12, with my mom watching it in her office on the 14-inch CRT television slash VHS combo. Watch the second one hit. I remember saying, freaking hell, and for once not being told off for it. I have a similar story. I was eight and also in the UK at the time. I used to go to a friend's house after school and get picked up by my mom after she finished work. I distinctly remember getting in trouble for calling the pilot a silly bastard for flying the plane into a building. I don't think anyone understood the magnitude of the situation at that point. Yeah, that's what I thought when the first plane hit. Some stupid idiot approaching the airport far too low. Then, oh God, this is deliberate when the second plane hit. Then we got the news of the other planes and I was like, is the US being invaded? I was at home on the other side of the world trying to watch cartoons and being annoyed why I couldn't. I was eight at the time. Same, eight year old Australian here, was totally mad that Pokemon wasn't on that morning. My parents had to sit me down and talk me through the tragedy that had just happened. I remember feeling sad, but also a little mad about missing Pokemon. I was in my mid 20s at the time and on the internet. When a friend in the US told me about the first plane impact, I turned on the late night CNN feed, Channel 7 used to run it instead of infomercials. I don't remember for sure, but I think it was about 1am Melbourne time. I woke up my wife and told her I had just saw the start of World War 3, and she said, huh? What? I'll just read about it in the morning, and went back to sleep. The next morning, she woke up and said, holy crap, you were serious? That's how I feel when anyone tells me anything while I'm half asleep. I was at the World Trade Center on 9-11 because I worked across the street. I was at the base of the South Tower when I saw the second plane go into the building and I ran away toward the South Street Seaport. It had a huge impact on my life and still does, but I met the love of my life because of it and now we have a son. I was thinking about it today because New York Magazine did a profile on us on Valentine's Day of 2002 and called it Love After 9-11. There was a lot of coverage after 9-11 on how many surviving firefighters ended up leaving their wives for the widows of their dead colleagues in the years after. Basically, they would be consoling the widows and form a bond over their shared grief. Strange effects of a terrible day. Trauma bonding is a real thing. If you've never heard of it, look it up. I was in the restaurant business at the time. Woke up to start getting ready to go to wine tasting at Windows of the World at 1 p.m. Top floor of the North Tower. Then I turned on the TV. I had taken the evening class about six months earlier. If you worked at WOW, I'm sorry for the loss of your coworkers. Heather was a really amazing pastry chef. Wow, this imparts a strange feeling. For you to know and share the name of someone who passed away as the result of the attacks, it immediately humanizes it and makes it more personal instead of a thing that happened. Third day of high school in Long Island, every TV was turned on around 8.50 a.m. My fourth period global teacher ran out of the class when the first tower fell. My sequential two math teacher still gave us a quiz that day. Kid behind me was crying the whole time. His parents worked at the World Trade Center. Never saw him again the following day. That next day, they sent the freshman class on a retreat to meet their fellow classmates, as we previously planned. It was quiet the whole time. In case anyone was curious, I don't remember the kid's name, and I'm pretty sure he lost both parents that day and already knew that they were gone. And he had told the math teacher, who was Mrs. Clean. So yes, she gave us the quiz and him with the possible knowledge of his parents being gone. My high school locked down, and they wouldn't tell us what happened until later in the day. It sucked because it made the whole day strange. Mine also locked down. I was one week into the 10th grade studying for my math class. That teacher said, F that, this is history, and wheeled in a TV to the center of the board and turned it on. I stayed in that class for the next three periods. I often squatted in his room with some other people. Until I got picked up, he still goes down as my favorite teacher. I was in college and my art history professor gave us a test that day. It was at 11 a.m. and all I remember is all of us sitting there just blinking and looking around. I was a sophomore, and someone asked our anthropology professor to turn on the TV. That was already in the classroom, so we could try to understand what was going on. She refused, but none of us really understood what was happening at that point. I had to watch the second plane hit while having breakfast at the main cafeteria a bit later. 
The TV was very smallish and attached to the wall where it met the ceiling, and it was always on mute. I remember that no one could get cell phone service all day. Aside from the usual contingent of future hipsters, most of the student body had cell phones, but they weren't at all the means of rapid information they are now. Man, I'm old. I don't think I had a cell phone during 9-11, but I think I remember hearing about how phone lines weren't working. Working at a bakery listening to the radio, I was 21. It reminded me of the War of the Worlds broadcast that I learned about in history class. I still wasn't sure it was real until I got home and saw it for myself. Driving to Rutgers University, about 30 miles from New York City, seeing a giant plume of smoke coming up and not realizing what it was from, I got to campus and was told classes were canceled and we were under attack. I had just woke up, Turned on the radio, heard the DJ talking about the first plane hitting, then watched the second plane hit live on TV. I was on a plane halfway over the Atlantic from Germany going back to the US. The plane had to turn around and go back to Germany. I was 10 months old. I still have the passport with my 91101 stamp on it. Wow, there's an amazing documentary about the emergency landings that had to take place at the airport in Canada because of the hijackings. It's an interesting story, but I'm glad your family was able to go back instead of having to deal with that. I was working in downtown Ottawa, Canada, for those that don't know, in a skyscraper when it came on the news after the first plane hit. I remember the first news saying that they thought it was a news helicopter that had accidentally hit one of the towers. I went to one of our boardrooms and saw the second tower hit live on TV on one of our massive projector screens. We were told to go home at some point after the news of other planes started coming down. Leaving our building and traveling through downtown was intense. We knew planes were being diverted. We didn't know if we were under attack too. I was one block away from Parliament Hill and the streets were filled with military and heavily armed police vehicles. I also saw people jumping and the towers fall while it was being recorded live. Even though I wasn't in New York City, it was still an event experienced in real time. Some years on September 11th, it hits harder for some reason. I was in the fifth grade fifth floor math class looking out the window like usual at the Manhattan skyline from our school in Queens. We didn't see the first plane hit, but we did see the smoke and we pointed it out to our teacher and said that must be some kind of fire. I remember thinking how the heck were the firemen going to spray water all the way to the top. Teacher next door came in and told our math teacher to turn on the radio. When the second plane hit, the radio went off and soon after we were all called to the lunchroom. Some of the kids' names were called and they were pulled to go to the principal's office afterwards. I found out that their parents had worked in the towers. It was very surreal not knowing what was going on and the teachers all huddling together whispering amongst themselves. After a few hours, they let us go home and I ran home across the street and made it to the fifth floor apartment asking my mom what was going on and if I could go to the roof and look at the skyline. I went up there by myself and it was the weirdest view I'd ever seen. The towers weren't there anymore. I stayed there for what felt like the rest of the day just looking at the smoke and fighter jets flying above me towards Manhattan. School days for the next few months were weird. We were like in this limbo where all we had to do was have positive talks about America and make United We Stand, Divided We Fall posters to hang around town. But there was always an underlining feeling of hurt and sadness. Those were some strange days. At the exact moment, sleeping. I was in California, so I was still asleep at the time. I was in college and I overslept that day. Woke up and was in a rush to get to my first class. My roommate at the time was trying to show me something on TV that morning, but I was in so much of a rush I didn't pay attention to him and left for class. In the car, I had a CD playing. If I had the radio on, I probably would have heard it there. When I got to school, the parking lot was usually full and running late meant you wouldn't be able to find a parking spot, but it was almost empty and I was able to get a parking spot right up in front of the school. I should have known something was off, but I was just happy to be getting a good parking spot. I rushed to class and when I got there, this class that usually had 50 students normally had about a half dozen people there. I said, what's going on? Where is everybody? That's when I finally found out what happened. The internet was a thing and some people did have cell phones, but there wasn't constant communication like there is now. So I was able to go the whole morning without knowing. I was also in college and late for class that day, but still living at home. Flicked on the light bulb and it burned out. Went downstairs to get a new one and said, hey mom, the light burned out. And she said, this is honestly the worst thing I've ever seen or heard. I was like, don't worry, I'm changing it now. 10 minutes later, idiot me figured out what she meant. She had saw the second plane hit. I remember for years waiting for things to settle down and get back to normal, and it just never did. So this is a genuine question. I was born in 2002 and always hear about people saying things never got back to normal after 9-11, but what changed? I realize airport security is very different now, but beyond that, I've never been able to grasp what people were talking about. 
Was it similar to the pandemic where it was just a fundamental culture shift that can't really be articulated? Or was it something more tangible than that? Well, this is my opinion as a Gen Xer, 1967. There was this aura of invincibility. The US takes the fight to you and no one ever came to our house and picked a fight with America. The closest thing was Pearl Harbor and you saw how things turned out for Japan. So don't even think about it. In that one act, America was no longer invincible. Also, it wasn't a country who did it, but a group of secret extremists. We were attacked by a ghost. The US was vulnerable to a ragtag group of misfits. What if a country with resources wanted to do us harm? We're screwed. This sense of and projection of invincibility has never returned. I was taught in school the US is a melting pot of individuals. We're all different individuals. But you come to America, assimilate, and melt into the big happy family called America. Middle Easterns who immigrated to America were perceived as rejections of their country's cultures and ideologies in favor of becoming more westernized. That mindset of welcoming and acceptance of foreigners flipped immediately. The hijackers, who were foreigners, lived amongst us for months and years. Immediately, there was a huge distrust of Middle Easterners. This has not changed for a lot of Americans and has given a rise to this plague of nationalism you see now. Also, the heightened airport security and the US government's surveillance of its citizens in the name of national security flies in the face of this notion, America is the freest country on earth. Additionally, there was this huge amount of propaganda that said, as a patriotic American, if you see something suspicious, say something to authorities. This sense of true freedom has never returned, and we're all on the outlook to report something suspicious. I believe this has morphed into Karens reporting suspicious people, aka minorities, in their neighborhoods. There's probably more. These are the biggest changes I've seen from 9-11, and there's no denying that there was a ripple effect after. Celebrating my 17th birthday. This was in Colorado, so the news broke right after I left for school. I got flowers and cards from friends, and we hung out before class started. Then I went to first period. We had a sub and she opened the class with the news. She let us watch it on TV, and by that point, both towers had already been hit. I was kind of just half doing my assignments and checking the TV. I distinctly remember looking up after the first tower collapsed and said, dumbfounded, where's the other one? Every class had the news on and we obviously didn't do anything else that day. Then I went home and we didn't really know what to do. Nobody felt like celebrating, but my grandparents were there, so I decided to at least open gifts. At the time, shirts with cityscapes were trendy. They were black with the skyline and silver glitter. I pointed out one or two mentions that they could be a cool birthday gift. I opened one box and staring back at me is one of the shirts I liked. It was the World Trade Center. We all stared in horrified silence, and I just put it down and sat there for a moment. Canadian here. I was just dropping my girlfriend off to class, and I heard about it on the CBC. I got home to see the replay of the second plane hit. I was driving on the South Street by the Dahl residence in Halifax when I heard it. I will never forget that day or that moment. I thought it was a joke. I thought it was a joke too. I was in the fourth grade at the time. As I remember it, it was just a normal day. Nothing odd going on at school in the morning. A classmate, her mother babysat me from time to time, went home for lunch. When she came back to school, she said something about how planes had hit a tower in the US. I don't remember anything out of the ordinary that afternoon at school, but all I could think about is how outrageous of a story that was. I didn't like her much. She lied all the time too. I remember after my dad came in to pick me up to take me home, I put it on TV, getting ready to watch The Simpsons and wait for dinner, but The Simpsons weren't on. All it was on almost every channel was the news about what had happened. And at that moment I was like, oh my God, she wasn't lying. Was still mad the Simpsons weren't on, but I ended up not sleeping that night. I was asleep at my parents' house. My mom came in and woke me up. She was upset. She wouldn't tell me what it was at first. She made me get up and see it on TV. I still had to go to work that day at Walmart, but there wasn't anybody shopping. I was 18, fresh out of high school. I remember thinking, among other things, that we were about to go to war and I would probably get drafted. So I figured why not end this video with my own personal story where I was during 9-11. I was in the eighth grade and I had just gotten to my dyslexia class. This class only had like six students in it and we were pretty cool with the teacher. Well, we thought it was going to be a normal goof around day when one of my classmates, a big guy, we will call him Jimmy, comes walking into the class and says, did you guys see a plane crashed into a building? We all responded like, what are you talking about, Jimmy? He then said, yeah, look, turn on the TV, it's on the news. So my teacher lets us turn on the TV we had in the classroom and we just sat there and watched the news coverage of the planes crashing into the towers. 
Now, I won't sit here and say I understood the gravity of the situation at the time. I was in middle school. All I cared about was video games, girls, and TV. I finished the rest of the day, but so many kids were taken out of class by their families. I remember going home and every channel just covering the attacks. I think only kids' channels like Nickelodeon continued playing their regular programming. I was really into MTV at the time, and even they were covering the attacks. I might be mistaken. I remember trying to change the channel and my brother getting super pissed at me the next morning. Said I was being disrespectful or something along those lines. I remember my mom getting after him and saying something like, Don't get mad at him, just let him be a kid. Kind of her way of shielding me from the madness of what was going on. After that, I just remember the world felt different. America was no longer this place that felt safe or awesome. This might have been the first time I noticed hate in the world because as many know, people from the Middle East during this time got treated differently. It was horrible. But on the other side of the coin, it was also the one time that America felt united. Everyone was on board with getting justice for what happened. Kinda surreal when you compare 9-11 to how Americans treat each other today. 9-11 changed how America saw the world in my opinion. I also think it reminded a lot of people that life is fragile and you should appreciate every moment you got because you never know when it's gonna be your last. That's it for this video. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories. And if you like Am I the Genius, give Am I the Jerk a shot. It's linked in the description too. Either way, thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you guys next time.